right, all guests on Zazlo Show 2.0 brought to us by the official beer of the program, Johnny Cuba, European roots with that Caribbean soul, a refreshing German lager in a can. Pick up a six-pack of Johnny Cuba for the weekend. You head on out to your local Sedanos, Presidente, Winn-Dixie. Make sure you always drink responsibly. Don't forget Johnny Cuba's mantra, stay tranquilo. I feel like it's an all-star break tradition. Granted, Major League <laughs> Baseball is getting going again because it's the weekend. But it's it's Alex Curry's yearly uh, stop by on Zazzle Show 2.0, the All Star Break. So great to see you. Great to have great you aboard the show again. The the happiest person on Fox Sports Television, Alex Curry, joining us here. Let's talk a little bit about the All Star Break here. I thought Alex, I'm not a huge baseball fan anymore. It's lost me a little bit over a few years because Part of, of Miami. Is- <laughs> yeah, a, a, a big part of that is because the Marlins, <laughs> disaster sure. that is yeah. Marlins. Yeah, that's a huge part of it, of course. But I will tell you, for 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 a sport that gets a lot of crap from mm-hmm. media fans, what have you, I thought the Major League Baseball All Star festivities Monday night, Tuesday mm-hmm. night, I thought it was fantastic. Oh, I mean, everything was wonderful. Texas has done a really good job. Obviously, they've been in the spotlight from the ALCS to the World Series to being the World Series champs to now hosting the All-Star Game. And they went above and beyond for this entire week in Texas. And there were so many memorable moments, whether they were good or bad, let's say the Home Run Derby anthem that went viral, um, more so than the Home Run Derby before it started. But there were so many... There were so many great moments for players that might not necessarily be in the spotlight, but deserve the attention that they're getting. Like, let's talk about Teoscar Hernandez, who was a home run derby champion, the first Dodger to ever win the home run derby. But Teoscar Hernandez was one of the sneaky pickups by the Dodgers this year that really kind of got overshadowed because... They spent over a billion dollars on Shohei Otani Otani and Yamamoto. And then they got Tyler Glass now, who was their ace pitcher. So Teoscar Hernandez kind of slid under the radar. And at the beginning of the season, he was my player to keep an eye on because I saw what he was capable of when he was with the Mariners up in Seattle. And he was kind of that missing piece that I think the Dodgers really needed. And the other big part that really stood out was during spring training, he was the one doing social media stuff with Shohei Otani and really kind of breaking him out of his shell. So right then and there, I saw, okay, he's going to be the personality and kind of the glue to bring so many of these guys together. And I just absolutely love this for Teo that he was able to get this. He wanted to be a part of the home run derby. This was a dream of his and to finally have it happen was just incredible. I will say though, slightly disappointed in his teammates because a lot of Dodger players were there, but the only teammate that stayed and was there when he won the home run derby was Tyler Glass now. So that, that was a little disappointing to me, but everything else, Vladdy Jr. was kind of like his hype guy throughout mm-hmm. the entire situation. Vladdy obviously won it last year, was giving him all these tips and was kind of talking to him in between each stage. He's the one that put the home run derby chain over him. So it was it was a really awesome experience. It's by far the best all-star game because it uh, it the is. NBA all-star game is a disgrace. Everybody knows that yeah. by now. The NHL had to change the formats. It's like a three on three tournament. Like skill event things now. Yeah. Too. And the yeah. Pro Bowl, I mean, they, they went away with that. With the Major League Baseball All Star game, I've always felt it was the best because even it if is. you're not a huge baseball fan, baseball's such a difficult sport. You have mm-hmm. to try. You can't half ass yeah. it. If you're no. just going through the motions out there, it's such a hard game. You're going to look foolish. Yeah. And there were some pretty. <sighs> standout moments once you got to the game, right? Because again, baseball is an individual sport played in a team atmosphere. So you're only really going to be the one that's going to hurt yourself, say, if you go a little too hard on a play or you're sliding into somebody. So you're still trying and you're still playing hard, but you you can do it without avoiding injury, basically is what I'm trying to say. But I think the coolest moment was Paul Skeens has kind of been one of the biggest stories to burst out onto the scene, Pirates rookie pitcher. Um, This was the first time that he got to face Aaron Judge. Now, Aaron Judge, we knew Paul Skeens, he was starting. He was only going to pitch in the first inning. Aaron Judge 
was batting fourth. So Juan Soto made it a thing because he was batting third, like, hey, I'm going to make sure that you get up and you get to pay, you get to face Paul Skeens. And you could kind of see in that moment, that battle between Skeens and Soto, he really wanted to get him out. Soto ends up walking. Judge comes to the plate and it's like, okay, this is the moment. These are big all-star moments. Skeens threw him one, like, Hundy, right down the middle. Mm -hmm. So anticlimactic. Ground, gra ground field out. Like, it was just yep. like, okay, you won it, Skeens. This was incredible. So anticlimactic. Just gets I, the hopper to third yeah. on the first pitch. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I thought MLB had a really good couple of days. Now, this weekend, speaking of all-star, is the WNBA all-star yes. festivities. Now, I don't know how you feel. It seems like you're into it. You I know, am. for the first time now, because I'm with ESPN, I, I pay attention to it, but also yep. because, hey, like, it's a big deal now because of Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Clark, you know, Angel so Reese. I'm going to be, yeah. So I'm going to be paying attention this weekend. I'll tell you what, what do you think is going to happen on Saturday night? They have the all-star games, team USA mm -hmm. versus yeah. team WNBA. Alex, yeah. I think the entire yeah. arena is going to be rooting against team USA. They are. I think, I think they right, made a huge are. mistake not selecting Caitlin Clark. Get off your high horse. She is the reason. She is the chosen one. Whether you want to admit it or not, the W had a great product, but it takes one person that is so polarizing to get the attention of the entire sports world. Caitlin Clark did that. They are selling out arenas. She got almost every single one of her games on a national, mm -hmm. it, 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 nationally televised. She got them private charters for the first time. She's getting multi-million dollar deals, not only for her, but also for her teammates. Also, if you saw the all-star fan voting, I think the highest Crazy. last year was around like 96,000. Yeah. It was over 700,000 votes. Like the numbers are right in front of your face. Honestly, in the long run, this could be a good thing for Caitlin Clark if you're trying to find the silver lining here because it's only going to motivate her even more to prove that she deserves to be here. I mean, she just broke the all-time assists record mm -hmm. in the WNBA. Like what she is doing, she deserves to be on Team USA. And now she's playing them in the All-Star game while also playing with her rival, Angel Reese, for the first time ever. And their rivalry is so fun to watch. It's kind of similar to a, a Magic and Bird situation back in the day where it started in college. Mm -hmm. They both kind of came into the league at the same time. One wins Rookie of the Year, one wins a title, goes back and forth for years. And this is something that I just hope and pray for us and for the league that continues on for years to come because they are changing the game. And I think Saturday is going to be so interesting to see how Caitlin Clark either proves like, hey, I should have been on this team and deserve to be here, or the entire crowd is going to turn on Team USA and be on Caitlin Clark's yeah. side. Uh, I, that's what I thought immediately. I, like, I think it's a great thing. for it, Maybe it not is. a good thing for Team USA, but a great thing for the WNBA mm -hmm. that she was left it off. Is. It's so much more interesting to root for Caitlin Clark as yes. the underdog going up against yes. the big bad Team USA yes. than if she's playing with the best ladies in the world against Team WNBA. This is so much more interesting. It's great. I'm so excited. I it's like this cool. is again, it's little things like this where I don't know what they're trying to prove because like how do you make money at the Olympics? Viewership, uh popularity, sponsors, deals. Like this is everything that the W has been wanting and asking for for years and they finally got it. And I feel like they they missed the mark on this one. Like that you missed the mark. Your viewership is not going to be as high if you had Caitlin Clark on that team. It's going to be a wild scene. I'm, I really yeah. think the whole arena is going to be rooting against Team USA, which is they might be. crazy with the game taking they place in the United States. Really crazy. Yeah. Uh, NFL, college yeah. football, both are right around the corner. I know. Uh, we're, we're headed toward the best time of the year. Yes. Which are you more excited for, the pro or the college game? I'm really excited for the NFL season, right? We got it. We got a lot of a lot of new, a lot of pressure on a lot of different guys. Um, I'll start with <laughs> the pressure, right? Because there was so much hype last year uh, for Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. What did we get? Four snaps. Now they're favored in 13 or 14 of their games heading into this season. They have six That's prime number time one story games. Story again, right? Their number one it, story, right? It is. It's yeah. their number one story. 
And I'm sorry, but Rodgers' last season with Green Bay was a declining not season. great. And then yeah, last year, four snaps before snapping his Achilles. He is 40 years old. 40 years old. The Jets have put all their eggs in the Aaron Rodgers basket. And if this doesn't work out, it's going to hit the fan. Like, people are going to get fired. It's going to be chaos with the Jets. He has so much pressure on him. And then not showing up to mandatory minicamp. I know they said not a big deal. But when you are the leader of a team and you were supposed to lead by example, and it's mandatory, and you're on vacation in Egypt, that's mm -hmm. a big deal. That's not a great start to a season at all. Yep. Yep. And and it didn't have to come to light the way that it did no. if, if the coach didn't come out in front of everybody and say this is an unexcused absence. If he didn't say that, none of us would care. Or if they got ahead of it. If Rogers and Sala got ahead of it and maybe told the media, hey, he's not going to be here because of this. We talked about it. It's excuse. So that's how you kind of know I don't think they have all their eggs in a basket over there. And it's kind of, okay, Rogers, we're, it's all up to you. But he's just mm -hmm. kind of doing his own thing as he always has. So that's going to be really interesting on kind of like the veteran side of things. But then Caleb Williams, I think, also is coming into the league with a lot of pressure, right? Because the Bears have never had that guy. The Bears have they've never, like never had They've literally a never had a franchise for quarterback. 4,000 yeah. yards in a never. season. Like, it, it, he could be that guy right out of the gates. But because everybody knows that, and there has been that much hype and pressure around him since his last season in college, knowing he's going to be the first overall pick, yeah. a lot of eyes are going to be on Caleb. Now, I think because he is that first NIL athlete coming out of some pretty pretty big programs, he knows how to handle himself. He knows how to handle a lot of pressure. He knows how to handle a lot of money. Obviously, we just saw with the contract talks getting delayed, he was trying to get it through his LLC. He was He's a businessman, right? He knows what he's doing, and he's trying to handle ways things in ways to set them up for the long run. But you don't know till you know. Like it, there were already reports that he was a little slow in practice. My perspective on this, I'm happy that it's happening early in practice because if it doesn't, then that means he's just going to get like blown out in the games. But the good news for Caleb, he kind of has a, an, I don't want to say easy, but a mellower start schedule to start his NFL career. Alex, you're in LA, obviously. I am. What's the what's the general uh, opinion from the fans out there? Everything surrounding LeBron, the contract extension, uh, -huh. uh the way they played the situation for Bronny. What's the mm -hmm. general thought on LeBron out there in LA? There's a lot of mixed emotions, um, but. I am on the side of the Lakers take care of their people. And if you wanted to keep LeBron James, you're going to have to draft his son, Bronny. Honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal. He was so late in the second round of the draft. Most of those guys don't pan out anyway. So if that's what it took in order for LeBron to re-sign with the Lakers and make him happy, it was it was a no-brainer, but obviously this is very much a LeBron team, even though JJ and LeBron have both come out and said, you know, we didn't talk about me getting the coaching job until after it happened. It's like, mm, you guys are buddies. Nope. Like, you do Nobody a believes together. that. Like, no I, one I, believes <laughs> that. Whatever. I did, however, I've liked JJ's approach in his presser and then when he was on the ESPN broadcast uh, at Summer League. And Doris asked him, you know, why, why do you want to do this? Like, why do you, why did you want to be a coach? Like a coach is a coach. Why did you want to do this? And he, he's like, I, I'm a masochist. Like, I, I just like hurting. I like doing this stuff. I'm obsessed. I have OCD. I like everything he's saying is right. And he's a little off the cuff and he's a little spicy, which I enjoy. Cause if it's going to work, he's going to have to do it his way. And at the end of the day, his message is I want to win. And that's all you can really ask for for a coach. And they are. They, if you have LeBron, you have AD. I think Connect, their first overall pick, was kind of a yeah. steal that they got. He looks NBA ready already in Summer League. And we, <laughs> thankfully, we're finally seeing like a little improvement from Bronny. He had a really tough start out of the gates mm -hmm. in Summer League, but finally had a decent game. I think it was last night. Um, but he's not he's not going to be a star NBA player. Like he's I think what six one. He's he's got good yeah. defensive skills. And I just I feel bad for him a little bit because he's not going to be his dad. 
Like that, that's not who Bronny is going to be, like one of the greatest of all time, like his father, LeBron James. He is a project is what they keep calling him. And he has potential and talent. Um, so he could be a good plug and play guy, but I don't see him being like star leading a team kind of a player. But the Laker fan is okay with the idea of, all right, LeBron, even if it's not in the best interest of the team, we take care of our guys. We want to make yeah. sure you're happy. Laker fans okay with that? They're, I, they're, they're pretty split. They're pretty split. But, like, I like to think what's going to motivate one of the greatest players of all time to not only just, like, win for himself, but win with his son and prove everybody wrong and to make mm -hmm. history. So you got to you gotta look at the bright side because it's already happened. So I'm trying to find the positive sides of all this as a lifelong Laker fan. And I think this is going to motivate LeBron James even more to not only make history as a first father-son duo on the court, but then possibly to win an NBA title with his son. Alex, I like to ask guests when we close – Okay. Are there any TV shows that they're watching these days? I always love TV show suggestions for me and my wife to watch together, maybe just yeah. for me to watch together. What What are you watching these days? What do you got? I am watching House of Dragons. Oh, of course, of course. Woo! I just what a show! Night. What a oh, show! The dragon battles. Yeah, and yep. I think it's Acolyte, the Star Wars movie, the Star Wars show. Oh, okay. I've not watched. Is what that I'm yet. watching okay. right now. All right. Those are those are the two on my queue right now all right uh yeah i'm with you on house of the dragon someone actually asked me or yesterday on the show yeah if i've watched acolyte yet i'm like listen yeah. i haven't even finished mandalorian yet i'm way behind what? i love I know. mando love I know. mando but we're a big star wars house here so anything star wars that comes out we're like on let's go yeah. my husband's on tour right now so it's like now we're watching them separate he's actually i think on your side of the country he's going through florida as band pepper <laughs> I was going to say, why don't you let everybody know yeah. the name of, of your husband's band? Okay, so that's how we could find them. Name's Pepper. Yeah, the band's Pepper. They're a reggae rock band touring with Iration. They are going, I think, through Florida this coming week and weekend. Yeah. Okay. All right. There you go. Alex, excellent job. Uh, Thank hopefully you. We don't, wait, we don't wait a year again the next time we get you I on. I know. Anytime. All right. Anytime. All right, and you'll, of course, uh, I mean, I had her on last week, but you always tell Joy Taylor hello from all of us oh, here in South Florida. I love Joy. I will. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having me.